These pieces are so difficult that even professional musicians, I'm talking the best musicians in the world, cannot play them. This performer skipped an entire page because it was too difficult to play. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Just as you have your nightmares, so do classical musicians. Our nightmares? Three names. Paganini, Ernest, and Roman Kim. That's right, these three legendary names were able to write music so difficult to play that even professional musicians skip whole chunks of it. Now, I don't consider myself a pro in any way, but after 15 years of playing violin, I still can't play any of these. Number one on this list, ladies and gentlemen, is the Earl King. Now, this is a monstrous piece, and it's only number four on the list. I mean, stay until the end of the video to see the most difficult piece ever written on the violin. Now, this piece requires extreme stamina. Picture yourself sprinting a marathon, not casually running, sprinting, all the while trying to balance an egg on your forehead without tripping on yourself or without dropping the egg. For around six pages, you're essentially playing rapid eighth notes with excruciatingly difficult chords that contort your hand. Now, only a handful of violinists are able to play this piece perfectly, but there is a subtle left hand pits that nobody is able to play. Not even the best violinists in the world. I mean, I've looked through almost every performance and nobody has been able to play it. Let's see how Hilary Hahn plays this piece. <laughs> Now, listen here. Dum bum bum. That's supposed to be left hand pits. Now, even Hilary Vaughn, one of the greatest legends on this earth, skipped this pits. Okay, let me attempt this so that you can see how impossible this is. start getting terrible. You, well, you have this fingered octave right here. And on top of that, you have to play this contorted scale. And then you have to pit while holding this crazy chord. Yeah, no, it, it, it's impossible. <laughs> The thing is, all of your fingers are already busy doing something else, and Ernest is expecting my third finger to rise up high and have enough energy, despite every single atom in my hand to be cramped up, to rise and pluck a string in while playing incredibly fast. Yeah, no, not today, boy, that boy. I, I do remember one wise man once say, if you can play it slowly, you can play it quickly. I really wish I could see him play this. I mean, if I had to rate this piece on a scale of 1 to 10, in terms of impossibility, I'd give it a 13.2. Number 2 on this list, ladies and gentlemen, is the Sore Cadenza. Now, this is a cadenza that's played in Paganini's first concerto. Now, a cadenza is basically a moment in a piece of music uh, where the soloist can freely show off, in simple terms. The soloist is often left to die uh, with incredibly arpeggiated patterns that contain double stops, left hand pizzicatos, harmonics, blah blah blah, you know, the, the hard stuff. Now there's this chap, his name is Emil Sore. He wrote this cadenza and it's so impossible to play that 98% of violinists who play this concerto skip this cadenza and opt for a more easy one. But at the time of this cadenza, the soloist is, is already exhausted. I know this video is not sponsored by Red Bull, no, I wish. Sadly, I don't have any sponsors yet. But I mean, you viewers can make anything possible. Like this video and subscribe. I don't know, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Let's have a listen and see how difficult this cadenza is. Is that even a note? It's, it's only been two lines, and you're already having tenths, thirds, a bow spiccato, harmonics. I mean, everything is in one package. Let's keep listening. That's so clean, too. That sounded angelic.
mean, right from the bat, I hear tense, which are nightmarishly difficult to play. I mean, my biggest fear is intonation and not breaking my fingers. Let's see if I can play this. even is this top note right here. <laughs> I think that's the highest note I've ever seen. What is that? A, C, E, G, A, L, D, E. Yeah, in terms of impossibility, I'm gonna have to give this a 30.4 out of 10. Let's go ahead and look at Paganini Caprice 5. Now this is meant to be one of the fastest caprices he's ever written. Now this is a caprice that's not so much difficult for, for the left hand fingers, but for the right hand. Now when Paganini apparently wrote this, he probably said something like, You thought this was gonna be easy, didn't you? Probably woke up one morning and said, let me just make it harder. Now the reason this caprice is so difficult it's because it has something called ricochet, friends. Now, ricochet and violinists don't really like each other. This is an awfully difficult technique that requires you to precisely balance an exact amount of notes in a single bow stroke. So ricochet looks something like this. It's when you have to balance, let's say, three notes. One, two, three, up. One, two, three, up. One, two, three, up. One, two, three, up. And you have to do it with such precision. Um, so if you include notes, it kind of sounds something like this. Almost nobody plays this caprice in the original ricochet bowing because it's just such a pain in the butt. Except for her, Samina Stutter. Let's hear how she makes this ricochet sound so easy. So precise, so crispy, so equal. She's staying at one little spot in the bow and she's not moving from there. So focused. And, and, and what makes it so hard is all of those string crossings. I guess it's manageable to do on one string, but when you have to play four strings back to back, it's not its not easy, friends. Now let's hear how Shlomo Mintz plays it. Uh, now he's cheating here, and, and he's not playing it in the original bowing, and he sacrifices the bow technique in order to get more speed. So you can hear that it's relatively much more faster. And the reason for that is because he, he, he skips that. Ricochet part. Finally, at number four, ladies and gentlemen, we have perhaps the most difficult piece ever written. This piece violates every single laws of physics you probably know. Now, this piece is called God Save the King, or as I like to call it, God Save the Violinist. Because we're all in need of salvation from sin and Paganini. Now, it's six pages in length, but what is shocking is the fact that even the best musicians who have ever lived skip a whole page <laughs> when playing this. That's almost 20% of the piece. And they do so because of a nightmare we call harmonics. But no, ladies and gentlemen, not only one harmonic, but two harmonics played together. Now, harmonics are essentially high pitch notes. And in order to play them, you need a very specific fine bow speed, and you need a specific pressure on your fingers in order to be able to play it. And if you fail in one of these areas, you will sound like a five-year-old trying to whistle. But this is what harmonics sound like. So essentially you're putting 100% of pressure on your index finger and then you have to lightly skim the string with your fourth finger. You have to make sure that it's at this exact location. It won't work here, it won't work here, it has to be right here. And the amount of pressure that you're putting here is around 15%. So you have to multitask between 100% pressure and 15% pressure. But before we get into this double harmonic section, you have to go through three levels three variations, and they are each demonically difficult. Want to hear me try and play them? <laughs> well, I can confidently say um, that I can play the introduction. That makes 
makes me happy. It's just the first two lines. <laughs> it definitely gets more difficult, don't worry. And now here, level three, before we enter into the double harmonics section, we have a technique that will absolutely destroy your hand. Now, I do promise you, it sounds better when an actual professional says it. If this video, by some godly miracle, reaches 50k likes, I'll do it. And give you my word, if this video gets 50,000 likes... Now, this doesn't even look like violin sheet music anymore. This looks like gibberish. <laughs> because no, no one annotates music like this. It even writes you on top how it's supposed to sound like in case you're confused on how difficult it sounds and are clueless on how to play it. Five-year-old kid whistling. What am I doing wrong? You know you're a failure when you can't even play one bar of music properly. I'm sorry I failed you, mother. Now let's cheer up our spirits and hear what it's actually supposed to sound like by the one and only, the goat of violin playing. Maybe even better than Paganini himself. We have Roman Kim playing God Save the King. Let's hear this spot. playing the first four variations, your hand is exhausted. It's probably even trembling with fatigue. <laughs> it's like working in a gulag all day, where all you do is transport rocks from one side to another, and then trying to tiptoe like a ballerina at the end of the day without having your legs shake from pure exhaustion. <laughs> even Zimmerman, one of the greatest violinists who's ever walked this planet, skips this part <laughs> when he plays this, because it's just so impossible to play. Let's take a look. So he's playing this absurdly difficult pizzicato part. And then, he's supposed to... Oh, he's not playing the harmonics part. He immediately skips this whole page and goes to the finale. The last variation. And in truth, I believe it's because he thought it was too difficult to play. Just like everybody who plays the violin. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Let's try to get to 15,000 subscribers by the end of December. Until then, friends, go practice.